Hi everyone and welcome back to another Borkano game video. Today's video is AK2, an in-depth team building guide. First time here, welcome aboard. All right, let's jump right into this. One of the first things that I wanted to cover is the Google spreadsheets and talk about tanks. So main tanks are essentially the carry for your team and they're going to be sitting in the front and taking all the damage, all right? The reason why it's important to have a tank is if you don't have a tank, your team will essentially get shredded to the point where all of your attackers and supports die. Now the thing is with off tank is these are characters that are meant to sit in the back to take the punishment for you. So for example, Pekko cannot off tank because her position is always in the front and someone like Shizuru can off tank because it is an off position tank where she can sit technically in the middle or Maho can sit in the back to take the punishment for you. So let's go ahead and go through a map. This is 7-1 hard and we're gonna break down the enemies. This is something I want us to take a look at when you're pushing maps, okay? So here is the biggie now, or Biggle. Biggle is important because he casts long range attacks. I want us to see here how we're going to fail the map even though I have really high powered units and then pay attention also to Alto Bird who can cast heals, all right? So we're gonna click start and then this is our team. This is like, you know, the normal roster. There are a couple of issues with this team. That's mainly because of the fact I have Peko here who is a tank. I have Kokoro who's a support, Yukari who's a support, and Yui who's a support. Now, the problem is, is not because of the fact that we cannot, you know, stay alive. The issue more relies on the fact that we do not have enough DPS. The only DPS comes in the form of Peko and Carol, all right? Now, Kokoro and others can deal a little bit of damage, but it's not enough to the point where, wow, that's, you know, significant damage. And even Peko's damage is super mitigatable. You can see right here, all of these units that we selected earlier, if you didn't see, they're short range attackers. So they will only attack Peko. Obviously, that's a good thing. You don't really have to slam an off position tank like so to mitigate the damage that's occurring in other places. Now you can see here, Yui is a pretty good off position tank because now Yui's gonna take punishment. She can take a little bit of punishment. She has enough physical defense to stay alive. The only issue though is sometimes if you don't position her well or if someone else sits in the back, for example, if Kara was in the back, she'll die almost instantaneously. So you can see here that, you know, we're going through the motions. The timer is just ticking by and I'm not really pushing the map as fast as I can. And this is where it's important to have maybe one tank only, one support only, like you only run Yukari and then you have more DPS. Of course, this varies throughout the map because sometimes in maps you need double tanks. Double tanks in the sense so that, you know, because your one tank can't take the deet, no matter how many tanks that you place or no matter how many tanks that you pair with a healer, sometimes it's best to double tank, one tank to take the heat in the front, and then you'll have another tank here in the second, second slot to taunt the enemies away, right? A good combo usually is Miyako and Kuka because Miyako has a very frontal position and then Kuka has a lower position right so you can see here Biggle is pretty much hitting Yui for everything he has and then our timer is going here by a minute now the key reason why I'm losing this fight is because that nightmare pecarine or that copy pecarine stalled the team that's important because there are going to be some maps where you cannot beat them because of the fact that your team is too support or too tank heavy and no matter what I do I pretty much can't get to the back because of the fact that this dude right here the alto bird is healing our enemy team so they're out tanking us this is a very rare occasion and you guys already know i'm level 70 like most of my units are pretty high starred this is something that's going to happen later down the road some folks wanted an in-depth team building guide and this is the best way to explain it by showing how you can lose based on the fact that you brought the wrong units no matter how strong you are right i have a really strong team here but i can't bring enough dps and not to mention, even if I can tank it, it's still not enough. So this time we're gonna change a few things. Instead of bringing Kokoro, we're gonna bring Tamaki to hit the back. Also, I'm gonna let Yui die. So we're gonna go ahead and bring someone like Suzume, right? This is just to show that Carol's going to take a lot of damage in the back. So the point of doing this example is to show Kuka can taunt and take some of the heat off of Keru, okay? So everything's normal here where these short range attackers, they're going to either go for Miyako and Kuka. The reason why Kuka is getting hit is because she's in a frontal position and she can also make taunt so she can take a little bit of the heat 
away from Miyako, which is very important, right? Because sometimes you don't want your tanks just taking all the damage. Kuka is pretty much the perfect off tank for Miyako. So if you have these two, feel free to use both of them and you'll do very well in yourself because it'll never get to the point where Miyako is getting overwhelmed. But now you can see here, this is Kuka's issue, right? She gets overwhelmed by the amount of damage. But this is the reason why she is an off position tank and not a main tank, okay? You can see here she's in off position. Try not to run her in the main tank position because she can't take the physical damage in story mode specifically. She works perfectly well in PvP. All right, you can see right here, Karu took a little bit of damage. Now Kuka is being hit because of her taunt abilities. That is so important to notice. Now Kuka is probably going to die if we can't get any heals, but you can also see Tamaki is going for units in the back if she can right she's not going for biggle because biggle doesn't have magic damage if biggle did magical damage then tamaki would go straight after him and that's one of tamaki's weaknesses in story is that this dude will pop up in particular and now this will expose our carol and carol's probably going to die because kuka has died right this is the things that i want to show because it's kind of hard to describe to newer players like what is the importance of positioning what is the importance of taunters right this is the importance and this is what makes Nozomi even better because you can safeguard your characters in the back like Carol because Nozomi will taunt and all the attention of Biggle will be attracted right here in the front. And of course, we want that in particular. That way your supports can stay alive longer. Your DPS in the back can live longer, right? So hopefully this explains as to why these positions even exist where you have a tank a support tank and an off position tank. So support tanks, they are there to provide shields and heals. And then off position tanks, they are there to pretty much make it so you can have someone to tank in the back line because sometimes you can't just place Peko in the back, right? Go ahead and go back here. We might not be able to make it because this enemy team's Pecorine is still alive. This team essentially got nullified in the damage aspects, right? All right, let's go here into 7-1 and bring a proper team to tackle this. We're going to take out these units and we're pretty much going to leave Miyako in here because she's the best tank. Using it in here to deal damage. We're going to bring in Kauri to deal even more damage. You don't have to use Kauri, by the way. I just like her because she's a fun dps to use yukari to pretty much tank the middle position and then we're going to bring yui in the back to tank the back position now these two in particular so long as they stay alive we'll do just fine now we have a middle or frontal tank which is miyako a middle tank which is position three yukari and then yui who is our backline tank right yui can take the heat she's already shown her capabilities that's why we're leaving her on the team now this map in particular requires these position or technically two positional tanks where it's only miyako in the front and yui in the back you could technically mitigate that like we said earlier just by bringing one taunt and this is the importance as to why it's best to scout a map obviously in the beginning it's not really going to be complicated this is just to get a sense of how positions exactly work for tanks and supports in particular because it's one of those things where it's not easy to fully grasp how things work straight off the bat because they don't really tell you what these positions are in princess connect it's one of these things that you have to sort of figure out through trial and error where you're like oh i get it finally that's why you know someone in the back like you is taking so much heat because Biggle right here just throws rocks in the back and doesn't care about anyone's life because that's what he does. Or you could just bring a taunter like Nozomi, hence why Nozomi is pretty much the queen of everything right now in Princess Connect because she's the only one that can have the ability to taunt like that and take the heat off. And you can see right here, we're doing really easy work because we're bringing proper DPS such as Kaori and Suzuna and they shredded that Peko. Suzuna and Kaori being able to actually take down the enemies right in front of them. So we're gonna do that. Hopefully we have enough. We have 41 seconds here. Okay, everything's still pretty close down to the wire. Putting it all together, this is what happens when you finally figure out the team. All right, Susana and Kaori were perfect DPS for this map because they could pretty much hit everything as hard as possible. Yui was perfect for the off tank position. And then Yukari and Miyako, they were able to support our team to prevent any deaths. And these are the aspects of Princess Connect that I hope you guys enjoy. Making your waifu shine, finally figuring out how the positions work because once it clicks, it only gets better because Princess Connect is good at adding a challenge, right? 
So that is an in-depth look into supports and tanks in particular. We'll cover other units in a different video. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Consider subscribing, dropping a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. Leave a comment and we'll do the giveaway details not today, but the following day. All right. Thanks so much for checking out this video.